This video is about Canada, about the fucking Leafs, and how they think they're better than everyone else when they are the scum and the laughingstock and the ignorant slaves, at best, of the white Western world. I like to rag on Australia. I absolutely despise everyone and everything in Great Britain and everything that country has produced anytime recently. Fuck you all. But none of you are that bad compared to Canada. None of you are pretty much anything but saints in comparison if you think about Canada. Let's talk a little bit, though, about the number one envied country, the country everyone loves to hate, the country that people know more about than their own fucking country because they're that fucking obsessive. These fucking haters love to lord over America's gun violence problem. Now, unfortunately, whenever you look at gun violence statistics, you have to do what? Not read the headline. You have to read the extract and say, how is, what is this data comprised of? Because when you see something like roughly 45 to 50,000 gun deaths per year, you go, well, that's extreme. Well, how many of those are suicides? About 55 to 60% of them. So if you just round it up from like 46,000, one year, 44, 48, 49,000, Let's go with 50, okay? Out of 50, around 28,000 of those. Suicides. Wipe them right off the board. Okay. How many of those are accidental shootings? Another 1,000 or so. Maybe, let's round it down to 500, okay, to be extra fair, because sometimes it's around that low. What do we have left? Gun homicides. Intentional murder, okay? That's going to be at about 20 to 25,000. Let's just cut it extra neat and say 25,000 people per 325 million are being shot to death in the United States every year. It's a problem, right? Which means you should get rid of guns. So Canada went and got rid of all the guns. But what does Canada have? Canada has this great big welfare state. They have a tax rate that is insane. It's at least, it's at least 30 to 40, sometimes as much as 70% higher than what a United States citizen pays in taxes per year to this great big welfare state and they have universal health care and they don't they don't they don't pay right they don't pay to uh, get health care first of all that's a lie people think the government has money that just sprouts out of their assholes they just shit it out and go Here, here's welfare we're gonna give this to the people instead of um, of coal executives or whatever right <clears throat> no the government's money is your tax money. So, okay, I pay a pretty reasonable rate for not the most fantastic insurance because I don't need a lot of insurance to cover my medical needs. I almost never end up in the hospital. I have very cheap prescriptions. Done, right? And I pay my monthly rate, which is lower than your tax rate by a lot, lower by the difference between our tax rate and what, you, what you're spending on what I'm about to get to, okay? And then I pay... Yes, a big fat check to a hospital for immediate services rendered that are designed to make sure that I am healthy and am no danger if I leave the facility. Like if I show up because I got food poisoning and they're worried I have appendicitis or something like that and they can't be sure, I get a CAT scan and I get it that day. That is not what happens in Canada. Unless they think you're fucking dying, if you're trying to get a procedure like a CAT scan, you're on a waiting list. Meanwhile, if you think you're paying nothing for this service, you're paying for everybody to go to the hospital every day. You are paying for everyone every day with your tax money. And you are paying more than I am paying to get better service than you. Therefore, my health care is objectively better than yours as flawed as it is yours is a fucking disaster and normally the people you're waiting behind are immigrants and refugees and brown people and oh you're you're white oh god forbid you're male and you're not gay or whatever you're at the back of the fucking line because they actually have socialist fucking progressive stack quotas for fucking health care so does britain too shut your mouth now what does canada do when their country is turning into a disaster, the cost of living due to a land speculation and property speculation has gone insane. Nobody can afford to live fucking anywhere. There are many, many cities in, in Canada that are more expensive to live in than New York City. It's pretty wild. 
and you're dealing with people who pay way more fucking taxes, therefore it's even harder for them to live there. And some of these people, maybe they can't afford to live any place. Maybe some of these people can't afford to treat terminal illnesses or mental illnesses or something. And what is Canada's great welfare program? What are they offering you for free to take care of yourself? Death! How would you like to be medically assisted in compassionate and professional manner by a medical doctor executing you like a fucking criminal on death row? Oh, I'm sorry, do you have cancer and can't afford it? Would you like to die? Oh, I'm sorry, you're homeless and have nowhere to live. Would you like to die? Oh, I'm sorry, are you extremely depressed but can't afford a therapist or medication? Would you like to die? How many people does Canada kill per year, folks? 10,000. Sometimes more. 10,000 people. Okay, well, America, America, what do they always lord over America? That's right, our guns, our gun violence problem. I think I've mentioned that several times before, about 50,000 50, people die, okay? Only about 20, 25,000 of those are homicides. Okay, how much of that is, uh, uh, how much of the population is that? Well, what is the population of the United States of America? 325 million. What is the population of the entirety of Canada? 40 million. They're killing 10,000 people. The state is murdering 10,000 people per 40 million every year. And in the United States, gangbangers, drug addicts, um, uh, horrible spouses, um, fucking scams, uh, Mexican cartels, whatever you have it, crimes of passion, people are... Uh, Mostly gang violence, though. An overwhelming percentage of that 25,000 is gang violence, right? Okay. But that's still 25,000. We'll give them the whole 25, even though it's less than half. It's more like 41%. But we'll give them 50. 25,000 per 325 million. Okay? So so if we said, what is, what is two and a half times the population of Canada? Okay? 40 million, 80 million, 100 million. That's still less than a third of the population of the United States. So if you're in Canada versus a citizen, you are more likely to be murdered by your own government at your own behest because you're so miserable to live in the shit fucking hole, the rotting compost heap of dead leaves known as Canada. You would kill yourself with the state at a rate higher than Americans kill themselves with guns and at a rate higher than Americans kill each other with guns. Three times higher, or at least one and a half times, depending on how you look at it. So keep this in mind that Canada is a fucking shithole and it has no right to judge anyone at all. It is a terrible fucking place to live. If you live there, you should flee to virtually almost anywhere. Believe it or not, prior to the war in Ukraine, Canada and United States citizens Guess how many of them have moved to a country in the, the far the far uh, east of Europe uh, that starts with the U and ends with the crane? People were moving there because you could, on a relatively small amount of American dollars, afford to live a very comfortable life in Ukraine. And you could probably even pull off the same in Belarus, okay, or Romania, okay. Because those governments don't, fuck with everybody. And guess guess why Canada can't afford to help people? Because Canada doesn't want to help Canadians. Can Canada wants to help Africans, Middle Easterners, Israel, NATO. They want to help people on the other fucking side of the world. In America, guess what your fucking quality of life would be if America wasn't tasked with being the military force of the entire Western world. We basically are NATO. NATO is a bunch of fuckers telling the United States government to do what to do with the United States government's military and their money and their military hardware and their fucking soldiers. We are there to launder money and fight illegal fucking ugly ass fucking corrupt wars on behalf of Balkan states against Russia. Who fucking cares? Who's actually interested in this? Who? How many of you really give a fuck about Ukraine? Some of you might have been sucked in because, oh, Putin bad, big country picking on little country. Except for Ukraine has been a United States basically puppet client state since 2014. 
Ukraine has been engaged in a civil war against its own citizens and trying to genocide and erase the culture of an entire segment of their own population. And that's basically how Russia annexed Crimea without firing a shot in 2014. Because just about everybody who lived in Crimea was sick of being basically abused fascistically by a man by the name of Vladimir Zelensky, who's still doing it. He's still fighting against guerrilla freedom fighters in his own country. He, he is an apartheid state like South Africa or Israel. But 10 minutes is about how much I wanted to do on this subject. But I was just saying that part in passing to say that's what your country likes to spend its money on. Not you. Not your infrastructure. Not your life. Not your education. Not your children's future. Not your law enforcement. Not the quality of your electrical grid or your energy consumption. Not for fucking anything. They want to fucking launder money with green energy companies who are doing stupid bullshit like fucking Elon Musk's Hyperloop, which is not going to do anything. They're complete pisses of money. Guess what? Guess why fucking uh, homelessness is so rampant in Toronto and places like Los Angeles and shit. These people have great big fucking multi-million dollar help the homeless programs. And all, there's all of these directors and, and vice directors and, and employees of these um, programs to save the homeless that absolutely have to be paid six or even seven figure salaries to run these welfare programs that never seem to solve a problem. I don't know, man. If I was being paid a million dollars a year to solve a problem, I'd do it as slowly as fucking possible. So, Canada, you are disarmed. Your government is literally genociding you. And your, complete, your economy is completely uh, collapsing. And don't worry, America is here too. But guess what? America will fare better than you. We have more sustainable land. We have an armed populace. We have a populace that's smarter than you and edu more educated than you and uh, isn't self-hating, uh, that doesn't want to sacrifice itself and its own well-being for the behalf of foreigners and outgroups. And people are just not us. I'm sorry. I am not responsible. It is not my job to cut off my hand in petty because some Africa got African got his hand cut off. Okay. I'm not re uh, required to be stolen from or I'm not inclined to be stolen from because so many people on some other side of the world with a bunch of uncivilized fuckers who I don't really consider human, let alone somebody I should give a shit about politically or anything. These people. I should spite myself. I should lower my quality of life and the safety of my family. And I should give my money and my peace of mind and my ability to function to these strangers. Well, I'm sorry, man. Not to sound conceited and cynical, but boo-hoo, nigga. Go fuck yourself. If, if you're in some country that's war-torn, go out there and take care of the problem yourself. And guess what? We're getting to a point where... You live in a socialist oligarchy and you live in a dictatorship now. Canada has voted against uh, Justin Trudeau in three subsequent, uh, three consecutive, excuse me, elections. He's still prime minister. I don't know how your parliamentary system works, but it's fucking, you think America's corrupt. <laughs> ah, they don't even have to rig elections. You just form a coalition and you stay in charge because you have enough shared power between you and some other fucking party who's colluding with you. What a joke. And these people have the balls to say that America's problem is that it only has two political parties. Are you fucking insane? Have you seen the places that have four or ten or twelve and the way they run shit? How do you think that's an improvement? Are you retarded? So anyway, 14 minutes is where we're going to cut this off. But just to let you know that America is the great Satan. America is a fucking evil country. America is run by extremely evil, inhuman, soulless people. And they are actively trying to destroy the lives of American citizens. And yet, America is so much better than you that you are way ahead on the timeline to destruction. I will see you wink out of existence and cross the event horizon of the black hole of anarchy decades before my country gets there. Because we're better than you. And because our constitution, even though it's ha had its, it's wiping somebody's ass at the moment and then they're sending it through a paper shredder and, it, and the law barely even exists, what it has achieved in the past has left a citizenry that the government lives in fear of and cannot abuse in the way that you are and you will be abused in Europe and especially in Australia 
and especially in Canada. Day of the rake. 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 Day of the rake.